Welcome to this session of my video series. Functions are the building blocks of any program. A function is a group of statements working in cooperation to achieve an objective. The statements work towards a single and well-defined objective. These four statements are working towards calculating a sum. They can be tied together into a function. These statements have been tied together into a function called fx. This is the name of the function. This is the body of the function. The body contains the statements of the function. The body is also called the function definition. It contains the code of the function. The void keyword means that this function doesn't return anything. Void means nothing. This is how our function appears in a completed program. This is our function. This is the main function. This code prints nothing. We have two functions, and yet nothing is printed. The code contained inside a function executes only if a calling is done. We have to issue a call from within the main function. A function has to be called before its code can be executed. A function can be called by simply writing its name like this. This statement causes the statements in the body to be executed. This is the completed program. It has a call to our function. Our function is being called from the main function. This statement calls the function. A function can accept input arguments. This is similar to a factory that takes raw material. The input values are also called parameters. They are also called arguments. This function takes two input parameters. This is the first argument. Its type is written alongside. So the first argument is of int type. This is the second argument. Its type has also to be mentioned here itself. This is the general representation of arguments. Each argument has an identifier, 
like we have X and Y in our example. If there are more than one input arguments, they are separated by comma. The arguments can be used in the body just like normal variables. This code shows how to call a function that accepts arguments. The arguments can be passed like this. They will be passed left to right. This means 5 will be copied to X, and 9 will be copied to Y. Five is copied into X. Nine is copied into Y. The output would be printed as fourteen. This is the wrong way of passing arguments. Don't write the data type with arguments. You don't have to repeat the types at the time of calling. Now I'll come to the basic question of why are functions written. This is the function that we have been discussing. The code inside it has been tested, and debugged. The company spent salaries and time to get it to perfection. This function is now able to add any two numbers. I won't reinvent the wheel when I have to add two numbers. I would simply call this function with proper arguments. Reusability is the main advantage offered by a function. We can use the same function to add as many pairs of numbers. Most importantly, we can be sure about the correctness of results. Because the code has already been debugged and tested. The same function has helped us add various numbers easily. There is another possibility. A function can be used in your other projects as well. You just have to take the entire function from one project and use elsewhere. Functions have another advantage that can be seen here. This code has been written without using a function. It achieves the same purpose of adding two pairs of numbers. The code our function has been used here for adding the first pair. And this is the same code repeated for the second pair. The code has more lines now. The executable file will be bigger in size. If we have to add two numbers, we shall have to paste these two statements each time. Functions help us write smaller code. Sometimes we have to modify the code at a later date. This is called maintenance. Functions help us write maintainable code. How? Code inside a function is at a single place. 
This makes it more practical and easy to maintain the code. This is the only place that would need changes. The rest of the code for our project doesn't have to be touched at all. You should be aware of the dry principle of software engineering. It states that repetition of code should be avoided at all costs. Code should be written at one place and called whenever required. This is a clear violation of this principle. The above code is being repeated here. It should have been tied into a function and the function called at both places. Whenever you find that a code is being repeated the second time, write a function. The code inside that function should be called through a function call. It should not be repeated at other places. Thank you.